Uh, thank you, Gabriela, for a nice introduction. Um, this presentation will be on the development of the cardiac conduction system or a sort of brief overview. Uh, I'm fortunate to, to work in Amsterdam and Leiden where we have two famous research labs on uh, cardiac development and also on uh, uh, research on the cardiac conduction system and I am involved in a small part of it. Um, we not only look at the conduction system, we also do uh, EP studies in these embryonic hearts either with optical mapping or as you can see here with uh, microelectrodes on uh, embryonic uh, chicken hearts and mouse hearts. Um, on the right, you see uh, very important persons for me. Uh, I think all you know, you all know Adriana Gittenberger de Groot, actually was my PhD supervisor a uh, long time ago, who unfortunately passed away two years ago. Uh, she was the head of the lab and, and a very enthusiastic and stimulating person. And now she, her successor more or less is uh, Monique Jongboot, uh, uh, with whom we collaborate. I think all uh, electrophysiologists should know something on the development of the conduction system because I think some substrates of arrhythmias can have a link with, uh, with development. Just a brief overview of the stages of heart development. You have the primary heart fields that fuse and they become a tube. Uh, then the heart starts looping at around day eight, 28 in humans and then eventually uh, septation uh, uh, and, and valves uh, come into place and then you have the mature heart and this is always a nice movie to show with uh, electron microscopy photos uh, put in a movie where you can see this looping process uh, of a chicken heart. It's a nice picture also so I put it on repeat. <laughs> so you see the, the tubular heart uh, looping and the outflow tract going inwards and, and this is the final uh, mature heart. But you have the building blocks of the heart. If you look at development of the heart, from the, comes from the first and second half heart field. You have the bilateral fields of the cardiac mesoderm in a primitive plate, then that fuses, and then you get this primitive heart tube from the first heart field with the endocardial jelly uh, in there. And then in yellow, you have the, the in yellow, you have the, the second heart field. And Actually, the second heart field uh, develops, uh, b uh, contributes to the myocardium on the outflow tract for the right ventricle, on the outflow tract, and on the inflow for the sinus venosus. Then you have the blue cells here. I'm not sure if you can see that. Can you see my mouse? No. Uh, the blue cells that migrate from the neural crest that also contribute to the outflow tract. And then you see here the here you see the cauliflower structure, which is a pre-epicardial uh, organ, uh, which cells from that organ migrate over the heart to become the epicardium and also contribute to endless fibrosis formation. So here you see a schematic drawing. This is the splenic mesoderm. You have the first heart field, which is islet one negative and islet one positive posterior second heart field. And if you see, you see here all the different gene and protein expression in the second heart field that contribute uh, to the different parts of the heart but also to the conduction system and also the primary heart field, the first heart field also contributes to the, uh, to the cardiac uh, conduction system. This is work from Amsterdam. Uh, the primary heart tube is slow conducting and eventually parts differentiate into chamber myocardium with connection 40, connection 43, uh, so fast conduction. And as you can see here on the left, that's a chicken uh, ECG a long time ago uh, by De Jong, where you can see a sort of sinusoid movement of uh, ECG. But even without any fibrosis formation, just by this slow conducting AV canal, you get a sort of normal ECG even in a, in a young heart prior to. Uh but if you look at the cardiac conduction system, the pacemaker activity first starts at the uh, inflow of the tubular heart. And then you get the activation contraction pattern, which is in the tubular heart is, is slow and peristaltic. Then you have the looped heart, and it gets sequential and, and, and uh, atrial and ventricular uh, activation. So you have areas of slow and fast conduction. And then finally, you have the rapid atrial and uh, ventricular uh, activation on the influence of sodium channel. Uh, uh, and then you've co you have to have a, a conduction system with an AV node, uh, maturation of the hypoclinical system, and, um, and also uh, endless fibrosis formation, otherwise you have a leak. 
So here you see this looped, unceptated quail heart. This is an optical mapping movie with a voltage sensitive dye, and you can see that you have a base to apex activation, which is the primitive activation. And here you have a septated quail heart where you can see there is mature apex Hispokinji uh, activation of the ventricle. So if you want to identify the cardiac conduction system, there are many, we know for sure now that it's a, that it's a myocardial origin, so it's not no neural tissue, it's myocardial origin. And you can visualize the conduction system with several markers uh, like HNK1, TBX3, HN4, um, and there are also some transgenic animal models to delineate the developing uh, uh, conduction system, as you can see here on the right in the blue, the CC at LexZ reporter mouse that also visualizes the conduction system. This is my own work, very, very long time ago, 1999, where we actually, <laughs> very long time ago, where we <laughs> delineated the cardiac conduction system with HNK1 marker. And the interesting thing is, and here you see these nice reconstructions, uh, took me hours to make them, uh, where you can see uh, not only the sinoatrial node or the AV node and the his bundle and bundle branches, but you can also see the right AV ring bundle around the tricuspid valve, retroaortic ring bundle, and interesting, three tracks between the sinus node uh, and the AV node area around the coronary sinus and even around the pulmonary vein. That was quite a hot topic then because you had atrial fibrillation coming from the pulmonary vein, so we suggested that maybe that had something to do with this, uh, this, these embryonic parts. But all these red parts, they finally disappear, and you, uh, you end up with a sinus node, AV node, and his bundle. If you look at sinus no, uh, the sinus node development, uh, and that's interesting, it starts the whole sinus venosa is probably pacemaker active, or can, can show pacemaker activity, but the first activity is actually from the left side, on the left sinus horn, and that shifts uh, at a later stage in chicken hearts to the right side. We measure that on optical mapping and also on these microelectrode measurements. Important for this sinus node development is um, all these expression patterns. This is uh, for the, the sinus venosus in blue, and the lime green is, uh, is NKX 2.5 negative myocardium. Uh, and that's in contrast to the atrial working myocardium. So the sinus venosus is an NKX 2.5 negative and expresses HN4, for example, um, and TBX3 and TBX18. But you can also see in this mouse heart on the left, I'm not sure if you can see it clearly, but you can see that also on the left, there appears to be a sort of small sinus node, which is NKX 2.5 negative, HN14 positive, but on the right side already quite a dominant uh, right sided sinus node is visible. This is myocardial staining. Here's the NKX 2.5 negative, HN14 uh, positive. So that's normal sinus node development, and all the expression uh, disappears eventually in the sinus venosus. The sinus node formation is, is influenced by SHOX2, which is a, a, a transcription factor, uh, and we had, a, uh, we had a knockout model, a SHOX2 uh, knockout model, and what you see in that, in, if you compare that to the wild type, here you see the normal wild type from the back, heart from the back, sinus venosus again. The green part is the NKX2.5 negative uh, myocardium, and if you look at the SHOX, mouse, you can see in dark green that the sinus venosus become NKX 2.5 positive. And that results in an underdeveloped AV, uh, sinus node, a hypoplastic sinus node, and hypoplastic sinus venosus. Then um, for the development of the AV node, TBX3 transcription factor is uh, very important. Actually, the idea is that that represses working myocardium, so this the primitive myocardium remains in that area and eventually the AV node will develop from that. Here in the green, you see in different stages this TBX3 staining of a uh, coloring, and in the end you can see that here the final developing conduction system is visible with AV node, his bundle, bundle branches, but again also this area between the sinus node, uh, the venous valves that are positive, and this retroaortic ring bundle. 
And actually all these conduction system markers, this is a, a model, I think uh, it was already shown, the ATN4 uh, reporter mouse, you can see here uh, that also the ATN4 uh, actually colors this, all these areas uh, between the sinus node and the AV node and actually it re resembles quite a lot these old uh, pictures from 1999 so the, the areas remain the same and the question is does that mean something uh, you could imagine that all these areas that disappear and you can see here an ablation uh, uh, this is a, this is from the paper from Kistler where you can see of course the, the terminal crest uh, area around the coronary sinus um, also around the pulmonary veins but also like the tricuspid <laughs> ring, which could be the rem rem remnants of this right atrioventricular ring bundle, and even this part, maybe the retro aortic uh, root uh, branch, could be uh, remnants of, of, of tissue. And the interesting thing is that Eva Rodine now is very hot uh, because it's a HN4 uh, blocker. And it's interesting that all these areas stain for HM4 during development. So I think that is really interesting that maybe those parts are, have an embryonic, uh, a, a different phenotype. A bit in short on the AV node, that's, we think it's a dual AV node origin that the sinus phenosis, as I said, it contacts the, the, the AV node, especially the posterior part is work from Tim Kelder where he followed the sinus phenosis area by in ovo experiments where he dyed, where he dyed red, uh, uh, the proximal part of the sinus phenosis and followed that during development. Uh, and as you can see here, sinus phenosis and the AV canal and eventually at later stages, that part touches the AV node on the posterior end. And, that, that, uh, and he did further experiments in, in chicken hearts. Uh, he took out this, this part for patch clamp techniques and what he showed was that that area actually showed pacemaker potentials and also had sinus phenosis gene expression and AV canal gene expression. And we hypothesized that that is the posterior extension of the AV node, uh, which might have uh, been uh, sinus phenosis uh, origin and maybe a sort of substrate for the AV NRT. Then to follow, uh, uh, to continue the formation of the endless fibrosis is uh, of course important. You have to have a mature conduction system, but also endless fibrosis uh, formation. Uh, the contribution is uh, of endocardial AV cushions on the luminal side, and there's inward migration of the sulcus uh, on, the, uh, on the outside. Uh, BMP signaling and, and these epicardial derived cells from this pro-epicardial organ, they, they play a role in, in uh, isolation of the, of the uh, AV ring. The EPDCs, as I said, that is uh, from the uh, pro-epicardial organ, uh, they, they spread out over the naked heart and become uh, epicardial cells, but they also grow into the sulcus and uh, differentiate to fibroblasts and, uh, uh, and also contribute to smooth muscle cells of coronary arteries. And this is also work from a couple of years ago that uh, if you look at normal hearts, whether it's human, uh, mouse, or, or, or quail or chicken, that even in normal hearts up to late stages, late after septation and late after maturation of the conduction system, you can find accessory pathways. This is, a, this is humans up to 20 weeks. You can see here uh, the tricuspid valve. This is a lateral tricuspid annulus, and you see clearly here a myocardial connection uh, between the atrial and the ventricle. And we looked, we counted that, and, and, and we saw that 67% of 76, 76% is on the right side, 70% on the left side, and 16% uh, 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 septal. And we also tried to, imp to prove that by, with, this, uh, with these uh, EP experiments where we placed in these hearts on the right, left ventricular base, right ventricular base, and on the apex microelectrodes and on the right atrium, and did sort of EP studies where we looked whether the mature apex to base conduction was present or there was primitive base to apex activation. And in all these post uh, septated quail and mouse hearts, you often found uh, base to apex uh, activation, which we suggest is ventricular pre excitation. 
and that relates to the number of accessory pathways and also uh, decreased in time when, the, when the, the, the mouse grows older. We even created a, a, a real WPW model uh, in OVO that was uh, worked by Denise Kolditz, uh, where she placed an eggshell between the small part of the eggshell between the proepicardial organ and the heart. So uh, as an epicardial inhibition model. And what you see then if you make ECG is that you get delta waves uh, in, the chicken, in the chicken heart, in the uh, developing heart. And if you look by microscopy of histology, then you see large APs on the left and right side um, through large uh, isolation uh, defects until the last stages of development. Actually, uh, uh, Vicente Stein went to Setmira in Prague to, to do optical mapping experience with that same model. Here you can see uh, aortic perfusion of this uh, very small uh, quail heart. Uh, did optical mapping with uh, voltage sensitive dye. And again, you could see that this is a late stage of, of uh, uh, chicken heart. And you can see that in the wild type, you never see base to apex uh, activation. Uh, while in half of this, uh, e this inhibited uh, quails, you see that until a very late stage of development. This is another model from, from Amsterdam, from the uh, Vincent Christoffels group, where they uh, looked at the TBX2 deficiency model. Uh, actually, TBX2 also prevents proliferation of working myocardium in the AV canal. So if you, uh, if you have a knockout model, you see also very large areas of, of uh, left-sided pathways here. Uh, as you can see here in green is, uh, is uh, Connexin uh, 43 positive myocardium. And you can see here on the left side, large accessory pathways. And they also did very nice optical mapping studies. Here's normal apex two. It's a bit slow, but it's apex uh, 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 apex to, to base uh, activation, and here you can see uh, clearly see this large um, accessory pathway conduction in the knockout model. Last uh, but not least, the Kinje fiber uh, that develops from the trabecular myocardium. Um, and what you see actually during development is in this small slide is that the compact part becomes bigger and bigger, and it's CX uh, connexin 40 negative, and the blue is uh, connexin 40 positive. The trabecular myocardium stays more or less in the same volume and develops eventually also part of it develops uh, into Purkinje fibers. And there, NKX 2.5 also plays a, a very important role. Uh, if you have a, a heterozygous uh, NKX 2.5 mouse, you get a deficient uh, an abnormal Purkinje fiber network, uh, so that regulates Purkinje fiber formation from the trabecular myocardium. So in summary, uh, the cardiac conduction system develops from both from the primary and secondary heart field, but it comprises much more areas than the final uh, sinus node, AV node, and his, his bundle and bundle branches. Um, it develops from, from slow and peristaltic contraction to more mature rapid atrial and ventricular uh, activation during an AV node development. The SEN develops from uh, the sinus node, develops from the sinus venosus myocardium, and the AV node develops, we think, fr uh, we, we postulate from the AV canal myocardium and also from sinus venosus input. And remnants of these, all these HN4 positive embryo embryological. Uh, conduction system could be a substrate for, well, I think, especially atrial arrhythmias. Um, and that is, I think, more supported also by now the Ivarbadine therapies uh, in also focal uh, atrial tachycardias. Um, for normal isolation of the aneurysm fibrosis, uh, you should uh, consider that it's ongoing until birth, almost, or well, at least until 20 weeks of gestation. But you could expect, uh, you could imagine that sometimes these pathways uh, are still there at birth, and th that's maybe the ones that disappear uh, in the first uh, weeks of life or in fetal life. And then you have maybe some models, as I showed, that uh, could explain uh, development of uh, WPW uh, if there is something wrong with uh, uh, the epicardial uh, 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 
uh, with, with the epicardium and the EPDCs. Thank you very much for your attention. Um, we could take some questions now for Nico, if anybody has them. Maybe, maybe I'll pose one while we're waiting. I mean, I'm fascinated by the accessory pathways in Epstein's anomaly. And I know there is a mouse model that will cause deformity of the tricuspid valve and pre-excitation in a mouse model. Do, do you have any work on that? No, we have not done any work. We, we've looked on the, that's more the Maheim fibers. We've looked at, uh, at, at I think there are different theories on, on formation of the right ventricle. I think everyone, well, I think it's now, uh, more or less acknowledge that the, the right ventricle develops from this second heart tube is not from the primary heart tube. We had in the past, we had the idea that it opened up the, the right ventricle from the primary fold and then you could explain all these, uh, well, de maldevelopment of the, of the tricuspid valve but also uh, that you get Maheim fibers and maybe uh, less I uh, isolated uh, uh, tricuspid annulus. But we have no experience with the, with the Epstein model. I mean, the embryology informs, I think, so much of what we see down the road uh, when we're caring for patients. And, uh, this is fascinating. That was a beautiful presentation. Any other questions? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, very nice presentation, Nico. I would like to ask a question about uh, left ventricular non-compaction because we know there are also some kind of uh, wall parkinson white syndrome like association with uh, this syndrome. Uh, what do you think uh, about there, there? Is there any hypothesis explain this occurrence together? No, I think the NKX 2.5 uh, mutations uh, uh, that are associated also with non-compaction. So that's, I think, more the, as I showed you, how important it is for, for uh, for the trabecular uh, myocardium and the compact myocardium. Uh, so I clearly see that link with, uh, with NKX 2.5, um, but it's more for, for uh, the non-compaction part, but for the WPW part, yeah, you need, um, so NKX 2.5 expression is, 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 is necessary for the working myocardium, and maybe uh, and if you have a deficiency then you, you would not expect uh, uh, accessory pathways uh, per se, but more uh, like this abnormal Purkinje uh, fibers and maybe uh, abnormal uh, formation of the, of the trabecular part and the compact part. Thank you for that talk. I'm just curious, what is your thoughts on the embryology of uh, accessory pathways that have decremental conduction properties? Yeah, if we, uh, we didn't mention that, but if you, if you look at, uh, We've also studied the AV node and made a lot of reconstructions on these, uh, especially also in humans. Uh, that, but that's not exactly the, the, the answer of your, of your uh, on your question. But what we see, if you uh, make reconstructions during development, you see a lot of connections uh, uh, of the AV node with uh, or the right AV ring with the ventricle. Um, and I, I showed you the right AV ring bundle, which is a slow conducting or AV node-like structure. And if you have accessory pathways uh, with, with uh, connected to this atrioventricular ring bundle, you could imagine that that is uh, decremental and that gives decremental conduction. But the AV node itself also has a lot of links with the ventricular myocardium in, in, during development. That, that becomes more and more defined and delineated, but in the beginning you see a lot of uh, uh, connections there. But I think the decremental part is mostly, uh, would be my explanation that it's the right atrial, atrioventricular ring bundle, which is really also visible with light electro, uh, electro microscopy, uh, and also with all these markers, uh, that is definitely a different myocardium than the working myocardium. Well, if there's no other questions, let's go on to the second speaker.